Yandere Simulator was heavily inspired by the Hitman series. Both games have the same premise. You must eliminate a target who is surrounded by dozens of potential witnesses while hiding your true identity as a cold, ruthless killer. You can be stealthy and make it look like an accident. You can go loud and murder everyone who gets in your way, or anything in between. Of course, there are numerous differences between Hitman and Yandere Sim. In Hitman, you travel to a different location for every mission. You have no reputation. You're a completely anonymous stranger wherever you go. In Yandere Sim, you visit the same location every day. Everyone knows your name and your face, and your actions can damage your reputation, which will have consequences on subsequent days. The protagonist of the Hitman games, Agent 47, is rarely able to interact with other characters without violence. The protagonist of Yandere Sim can interact with every single person in her school in a number of ways, and even befriend them to unlock new interactions. Agent 47 does not gain new abilities over the course of his games. Yandere-chan can develop a number of different skills and strengths over the course of the game by focusing on certain school subjects, reading manga, or joining clubs. Agent 47 can complete his mission regardless of how many bullet holes, fingerprints, and bloodstains he leaves behind. Yandere-chan must clean up every piece of evidence that links her to a crime, or else she will be arrested. Agent 47 can kill any security personnel or police officers that get in his way. Yandere-chan is no match for the police or her school's authority figures, and being caught by the police will result in a game over. Agent 47 must kill all of his targets. Yandere-chan will have the ability to eliminate her rivals without shedding a single drop of blood. I am doing everything I can to make Yandere Simulator as distinct from the Hitman games as possible, despite the fact that both games have such a similar premise. With that said, I think it's possible to improve the game design of Yandere Simulator by learning some lessons from Hitman. That's what I'm going to discuss in this video. In some of the Hitman games, Agent 47 gets to decide which items he's going to bring with him on missions. This is a sensible addition to Yandere Simulator. After all, Yandere-chan begins the day in her home, where she would logically have access to anything that would be found in an average house, such as a kitchen knife or rat poison. In Hitman 2016, guards react to the sight of dropped weapons by picking them up and transporting them to a safe location. Teachers in Yandere Simulator should definitely do the same thing. Dropping a dangerous object somewhere should cause a teacher to pick it up and put it somewhere safe. While the teacher is doing this, the player might be able to do sneaky things that the teacher would have witnessed if they were following their normal routine. In Hitman 2016, there are guards positioned at the entrance of the game's environments. This reminded me that Japanese high schools usually have a teacher positioned near the school's gate. This teacher has the responsibility of closing and opening the school gate when it's time for school to begin or end. This teacher is an important addition to the game because they will prevent you from going on a killing spree without consequence right in the front of the school. The most important gameplay mechanic in the Hitman games is the ability to steal clothing and disguise yourself. I've decided not to include anything like this in Yandere Simulator. It would feel like I'm plagiarizing Hitman. I want Yandere Simulator to be unique, original, and different. So I will not consider stealing Hitman's most famous game mechanic. Joining certain clubs will allow you to walk into areas without getting in trouble for trespassing and will allow you to carry certain objects around without looking suspicious. But changing your identity is not what Yandere Simulator is supposed to be about. Hitman 2016 is an episodic game, meaning that new missions will be released over time. The game launched with two training missions and one real mission. Despite the fact that the game only has one real mission, 
I've put over 20 hours into the game so far. One of the reasons that this game has been able to hold my interest for so long is because of the challenges. I became addicted to hunting down and completing each challenge. Even before the latest Hitman game was announced, I was already planning to add something similar to Yandere Sim. I hope to give Yandere Simulator dozens of challenges that will add tons of replay value to the game. The most recent Hitman games have featured environments with hundreds of NPCs on screen simultaneously. Sadly, this is not something that I'll be able to replicate in Yandere Simulator. You've probably noticed this, but I'm having a lot of trouble keeping Yandere Sim's frame rate stable. Of course, I won't release the game until I've fixed the frame rate, but I probably won't be able to offer an environment with hundreds of students walking around. This is not necessarily a bad thing. If Yandere Chan's school had hundreds of students, the corridors might look something like this. With so many students present, there is nowhere to hide, and it's impossible to get anywhere without being spotted. This does not facilitate stealth gameplay. I would prefer a school that only has around 100 students. This way, the school isn't so crowded that stealth gameplay is impossible. As a result of the school's low population, I will focus on designing a school that provides the player with lots of stealth opportunities, which wouldn't be possible if hundreds of students were walking around. In some of the Hitman games, you can throw a coin to distract a guard. I'd like Yandere-chan to have the ability to do something similar, but I don't want to rip off Hitman. So here's my idea. One of Yandere-chan's signature traits is her ability to laugh psychotically. However, I think that her laughter should have more utility. If Yandere-chan giggles, I think that other students should get curious and walk over to investigate the source of the sound. Imagine this. You are all alone in an empty school corridor. <laughs> Suddenly, you hear a sound. <laughs> Is that laughter? <laughs> it sounds like it's coming from around the next corner. <laughs> Will you take a look? In Yandere Simulator, the inventory has two slots for weapons, one slot for something attached to your back, and one slot for a mask. To drop something, you must hold down the button that corresponds to that slot. In Hitman 2016, the player's inventory isn't limited to a set of slots. The inventory is displayed as a ring of items that grows or shrinks depending on how many items the player is currently carrying. To drop something, you press the same button every time. This is infinitely smarter than the way Yandere Simulator's inventory works. My slot-based menu sucks. I'm probably going to switch to Hitman's way of doing things. Or maybe I'll adopt a system like the one from Resident Evil 4, where the player has a grid-based inventory and can only pick up a new item if there's enough open space on the grid. This was one of the most fun inventories I've ever seen in a game, because you basically have to play Tetris with your items in order to make room for new ones. Outside of story missions, Hitman 2016 offers the player two other types of missions, Contracts and Escalations. Contracts and Escalations are missions that are set in the same environments as story missions, but the goal is to assassinate a certain NPC or a set of NPCs under very specific circumstances. I'm not planning to do something exactly like this, but I do have multiple gameplay modes planned for Yandere Simulator. Custom mode would allow the player to design the layout of the high school, design each individual student in the school, and design each rival that must be eliminated. Random mode would give the player a randomly generated high school full of randomly generated students and randomly generate a new rival each week. Between allowing the player to design their own high school, 
or providing the player with an infinite supply of randomly generated high schools, I hope that Yandere Simulator will have just as much replay value, or even more replay value, than a Hitman game. Now, I'd like to discuss what I consider to be Yandere Simulator's biggest game design flaw. Most of the elimination methods currently available in the game require the player to have knowledge of exactly when and where they need to stand, what item they need to have equipped, and what skills they require in order to pull off a certain execution. Presently, this information can only be obtained by watching my YouTube videos. That's poor game design. The player should be able to obtain all necessary information to experience 100% of the game's content within the game itself. Hitman 2016 may contain the solution to this problem. It's a feature called Opportunities. While the player is walking around the environment, they can find and activate an opportunity, whereupon a series of instructions will appear on screen. These instructions provide the player with the information they need in order to activate scripted events that will put the target into a vulnerable position. I don't think that this feature is perfect. I ran around the environment for a ridiculously long time searching for all of the opportunities, and I only found about half of them. I had to locate the other half by watching walkthroughs on YouTube. That's exactly what I want to avoid with Yandere Simulator. Here's my solution. I'm going to add a new feature to Yandere Simulator that I call Schemes. The player can unlock a scheme by contacting Infochan and trading panty shots in exchange for information, which was always the intended purpose of Infochan. After being paid, Infochan will give the player a set of instructions that will result in the elimination of the current rival. Before you purchase a scheme, you are able to read a short description of what it will entail. This way, the player gets to choose whichever elimination method sounds the most appealing to them. After unlocking a scheme and telling the game that you wish to track the scheme, the game will display instructions that will guide the player to their rival's elimination. Of course, it will never be necessary to unlock a scheme in order to perform certain activities within the game. You can beat the entire game without taking a single panty shot or asking Infochan for a single favor. I could spend all day talking about Hitman and talking about game design, since those are two of my favorite topics, but this is where I'm going to end the video. I hope this video gave you an idea of how committed I am to making sure that Yandere Sim has solid game design. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.